Good morning. Welcome to Wednesdays with Willa. I am your host, Willa White, and this is my weekly podcast show that airs Wednesday mornings at 10 a.m. Eastern. I encourage you to join my Facebook page, Willa White Medium, so you can be alerted to when I go live for these kinds of special events. Uh, my podcast show, I typically have a special guest and we discuss uh, topics related to spiritualism, mediumship, healing, faith, family, and more. You can also check this out on the Lilydale Assembly page, my YouTube page, and blogtalkradio.com slash Radio. I am giving you a special virtual field trip tour to a very special location in Lilydale, the Lilydale Museum. And I've been here before. I encourage you to look back at the archive videos of the show on Willow White Medium. Uh, you can enjoy many of the different treasures that are highlighted in my show. And I'm delighted to have as my guest today, Ron Nagy. Let me turn this around. Good morning, Ron. Good morning, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> Ron is the Lilydale historian. He's been here for decades, uh, making sure that the information and items are preserved for Lilydale history. And here we are in the Lilydale Museum again. Ron's been a wonderful person to connect with, to share about the spirit treasures. And today we're going to be talking about spirit precipitated paintings. So Ron, let's start with what is a spirit precipitated painting? A spirit precipitated painting is a painting that just appears on canvas very slowly like a Polaroid develops from a blank canvas. It appears as some, someone deceased in a, usually a private seance and this is what you get some of these people here were the first ones that we found. Wow. So this is a, quite a curiosity and there will be skeptics in the group. And I already told Ron uh, today that I am going to give, give him hard hitting journalist questions. But those of you who know me and follow me know that I'm pretty much a softy. So uh, we are going to cover a little bit of, of the other side of this. Um, you know, the people for and against this kind of uh, event, right? The ones that are skeptics and the ones that are believers. Let's start with skeptics. Let's do it. When I first started writing my book, I wrote the book because I was a skeptic. I said, how could this happen? How was it fake? Is it, was it a trick? Was it sleight of hand and all that other stuff? So I started looking into the mediums, the Bank Sisters, the Campbell Brothers, the people that actually wrote different articles about how great this was. Mm -hmm. And then I started finding articles about people that wrote about this and how this could actually happen chemically by changing the chemical composition of different, uh, which I didn't understand, so I copied a lot of the words. And then the ice broke. During summer camp, I had a lady come in here from Canada. She was a neurologist, mm -hmm. and she started looking at the eyes real closely and she come up with the a neurologist is someone who looks at your eyes and they can tell different things that are wrong with your body the different vitamins you need the different ailments you have what you can it's, it's an alternate health and she came up with this thing here and she said, oh my, the autonomic nerve wreath is in this eye. What's an autonomic nerve wreath? So she told me that you can't paint that. Well, I said, these weren't painted, they just appeared on canvas. And she says, well, that autonomic nerve wreath is the wreath that connects to your entire nervous system, it goes right through, it's down your tailbone. Mm -hmm. and 
you can't paint it. I said, okay, they weren't painted. So she went on to do the rest of the, uh, and we kind of know why she passed. Mm. This is Mrs. Caldwell. The Caldwells were the original people back in 1880 who built the house, which is now called the Angel House, uh -huh. the first house on South Street. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, they were our founders. Okay, so I tricked her. I emailed her another picture of, I don't have it here, but Abraham Lincoln. I just did the eyes of Abraham Lincoln. Nothing else, no hair, no face, nothing, just the eyes. And she did an, she analyzed the eyes and she sent me back a report and she told me everything that was uh, me uh, medically wrong or upsetting Lincoln, hmm. even to the point where he was a depressive and he was taking blue mass pills, which mm. was like Prozac mm -hmm. now, mm -hmm. but he was taking that before he was president and it was putting too much, too much lead and different things in his body, but he stopped taking that. But it still showed up in his iris. In the precipitated painting. And in that's... that precipitated painting, mm -hmm. it also showed how Lincoln had features where his neck was longer, his arms were longer, yes. and different things like that. And then I told her it was Abraham Lincoln, and she said, oh my God, you know? So... I started putting all the information together and it ended up with with the book. So it started out as a skeptic's book mm -hmm. and I wrote it as a skeptic's book. So I'm not telling you to, to believe this book, right. but take a look at it, look at the pros and cons, look at the pictures and look at the different features in each one of these and the ones in the Maplewood and the ones at the National, they have four precipitated paintings, there's mm -hmm. one in the library. Mm -hmm. There, people are still bringing them to me, they pick them up at yard sales, <laughs> they buy them for the frames mm -hmm. and different things like that. And I get really interesting, interesting pictures. This came up from Linesville, and it had the whole story of how the people drove up here from Linesville, mm -hmm. the route they took and everything. And the old man that, that was telling this story was the young kid who drove this man's wife up. He was the founder of the Linesville Library. Mm -hmm. And they wanted me to check it out and, and authenticate it put it on paper so they could sell it on eBay. Oh. oh, I said, you can't sell that on eBay. I said, <laughs> he'll haunt your, your library. You've got to keep that. He's giving your library good luck and all like that, you mm -hmm. know? But sure. It's really exciting when people do things like that. So I think we should clarify for people that precipitated spirit paintings are a form of physical mediumship. And it is typically not done in modern times, but this was very popular during Victorian times with certain physical mediums. Yes, and the next question somebody asked me mm -hmm. is, are, are they still done today? Mm -hmm. And I say, not really. Not the same way they did them back then, because back then they would sit and read a book they didn't have television, they didn't have radio, they didn't jump in their, in their car, they didn't go to the movies, they didn't go to the mall. Mm -hmm. They sat around and they had seances, they read books, and plus, second, there's too much adverse energy in, in the air today. Mm -hmm. All this uh, computers and telephones and all this electronic stuff going through the air, yeah. I think it takes a lot away from spirit trying to come down and do something this because if I could add when you have a sense spirit you're calling a spirit 
And that spirit keeps on coming down, coming down, coming down. So your hour and a half seance is over. Mm -hmm. That spirit's still, still trying to come down. So you have a seance the next week. You must have it in the same place, same room, sit in the same chair, wear the same clothes. Because that spirit's coming, still coming down, and he's looking at this seance group, and to that spirit is one moment. Mm -hmm. But to you, it's another week, another day, and all like that. But you've mm -hmm. got to... It's one moment for that spirit. Time and you space can't are forget different. that. Mm -hmm. So you've got to have patience. And that's why a lot of the physical mediumship isn't done today. Because the people don't have the patience. So in terms of how these particular precipitated spirit or spirit paintings were done. Um, can you tell us a little bit about that? That would they would sit. Uh, depends on the medium and how they how they worked, right? In this particular yeah. painting, um, why don't you tell them who who made this one? This one here is we we believe the Bang Sisters. Yes. And let's tell them who the Bang Sisters. The Bang are. Sisters here were actual sisters. Mm -hmm. They were like two years apart. They were from Chicago. They came here a lot. They went to Chesterfield. They also came to Lilydale. They didn't buy a house here. They always rented. They didn't want the responsibility. Sure. Uh, a lot of what I read about the Bank Sisters is they would have private seances where the sisters would sit in a chair. They would hold a canvas on a chair between them. Mm -hmm. and turn, just set the canvas on the chair mm -hmm. and they would pinch one side of the canvas. Somebody would have an appointment and two or three people, the same family, and they would have a vision in their minds. They would keep that vision of a person that was deceased in their family mm -hmm. that they didn't have a good painting or picture of, mm -hmm. which they didn't have color pictures back in those days. Right. And to take a a photograph of somebody was a major expense. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So they wanted a, a, a picture. They sure. could bring, now if it's a trick, ah, they would bring their own canvas a lot of times because they wanted a different size. There's, there's some that are 48 inches. Sure. There's some that are, uh, a lot of them are, this is a standard size here, but then there's some that are, that are bigger. The bank sisters would go into a light trance. The, the sitters would sit there and they would keep on concentrating. And it took about 15 minutes to make a connection with spirit. And then the blank canvas would start to get real milky like, smeared over like a Polaroid does. Mm. And then very slowly, patiently now, very slowly, if you ever stared at a Polaroid picture developing, it takes forever. In today's time, yes. <laughs> and yeah, and then you just keep, it just come out within 15 to 20 minutes, you had a complete picture. Wow. So in terms of this, this was during daytime with During daytime, day light, in the in light, the, yeah. I only read in one instance where they did it in front of a window. Mm -hmm. After that, they did it anywhere. They, once in a while, one time I have a picture, they did it outside up here at Forest Temple. Mm -hmm. But I couldn't feel, figure out how they could have fooled anybody because it was just a canvas. It wasn't mm -hmm. encased in, in glass. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It wasn't like some of these TV shows where somebody tapped the top of the of the the canvas that and the holder and and it it was just yeah. like a magic trick. So the image would appear on the canvas while they're sitting for that intention of having spirit paint on the canvas. Did they provide paints below the so paints? The paints were in the room. Okay. They were like all squeezed in one, they called it a pot. Mm -hmm. 
whatever they called a pot must have been some kind of a bowl or something where, where they all the paints were in one bowl and it was just mixed together something like your computer ink mm -hmm. they didn't have any brushes in the room mm -hmm. i think they used the paint like that in a room because the paint fumes would go in the air mm -hmm. and that would would be in the air and the spirit could pick up on those chemicals in the air mm -hmm. and mix that with the dust that's in the air, the lint, anything that's in your house. That's why uh, a lot of times you'll read that these paintings uh, are look like the dust on a butterfly's wings, which I don't use that as much right. because it, we, what, what, you know, it's just meaning it's something very light. So they would see after they'd been sitting that there was less paint afterward or in the same amount? There, they had, uh, at one time they, they weighed the paint before and after mm -hmm. the process was done. Mm -hmm. There wasn't any difference. Mm, okay. So they just needed the fumes in here. I think it was the fumes. It was wasn't the, the actual paint, it was the fumes. Hmm. Very interesting with this. Now, now that was the Bang Sisters. The Bang Sisters, uh, they were Mary and Elizabeth, known as May and Lizzie, right? And I looked up their dates, and Mary lived from 1862 to 1917, and Lizzie lived from 1859 to 1920. So would we have a sense of when these paintings were made? Approximately what years? They were all done, be, or I figure, before 1914. Okay. The, uh, as a medium, physical medium gets older, a lot of times their powers start going down. Sure. It's the same as the, uh, the Campbell brothers. Mm -hmm. They stopped. Mm -hmm. They stopped mm -hmm. uh, around the same time or a little bit later. Plus, during that time, they started getting more electronics in here, let's say, like the radio started coming sure. out. Uh, they started having cars that came out. Uh, the Campbell brothers were getting older. One was much older than the other. They weren't brothers. They were... A, a, Alan and Charles, right? Alan and Charles. Mm -hmm. They were a gay couple mm -hmm. that combined their, their physical powers to produce, like, they always had that pen on them. Mm -hmm. They did most of their paintings in public. Okay. Or they would go overseas a lot. Mm -hmm. And they would go to that. Somebody asked me, why is there so many important people? Like, like Lincoln was done by Campbell Brothers, mm -hmm. uh, Napoleon down at the, the Maplewood and all. They traveled the world. You influenced the king or queen of the country about spiritualism. The whole country <laughs> became a spiritualist country. Yeah. Same as is if, if, a, if a Catholic monk or a pope would influence the country, the whole country would become Catholic. That's why they, they have so many important people in their paintings. And so this, this painting is of Otto von Bismarck, in case you can't read the little... And all those little cuts and bangs in his chest are... He wasn't machine gunned to death. That was damage done to the painting before <laughs> I put it under glass. Uh -huh. And it's put it against glass without a mat because if you leave air in there, mm -hmm. they'll curl. And have they examined the eyes of the Campbell Brothers paintings? The Lincoln. Lincoln, oh, okay, Lincoln, Lincoln was, was there. Lincoln was the Campbell Brothers. Okay. That's why I wanted that one. Because one was a Campbell Brothers and, one and one, one, this one here was a Bang Sisters. Right, right. So it's pretty much the same with the artwork if you look in the eyes. Mm -hmm. And that's difficult for now, a normal artist to convey. Now, mm -hmm. another, another skeptic who was a historian at Lilydale in 1943, mm -hmm. uh, 
Uh, Arthur Myers. Mm -hmm. He was a historian in 1943, and he said, let's solve this once and for all. So he contacted Eastman Kodak in Rochester, who were number one in the world. They tested pictures, mm -hmm. paintings they tested. So he took the Lincoln up to Eastman Kodak. They kept it. They went over it. They tested the canvas, the paint, everything you could think of back then. They came back with a three-page mimeograph report. It was great. But Arthur Meyer spent his winters in Florida and took all his history with him. And when he passed away, everything he had was just like, eh, what is it, you know? And it was gotten rid of. Mm. But mm. I went to the librarian at East Kodak, and she was nice enough to look for, it took her like three weeks to find the report, the results of the report was printed in a book. Everything that was tested that year was printed in a book. And they came to Lincoln. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All the other paintings that it were analyzed, this is this, 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 and this. But when it came to Lincoln, behind Lincoln, the only thing that was behind Lincoln was a question mark. Oh, my. <laughs> and that told her and it told me mm -hmm. that they didn't know what the paint media was mm -hmm. on that painting. So they couldn't identify it as normal paint that they would have been put out. Because every, everything says oil paint was put in a pot, mm -hmm. but none of the precipitated paintings or oil paint. They all look like pastel. Now, did the Camel brothers and the Bang sisters use the same techniques of sitting, setting the intention quietly with the, the client or the sitter at that time? The Camel the paint brothers and holding on to the canvases. like to use auditorium. Okay. And that's how their paintings appear. Mm -hmm. The bank sisters, most of the time that I read, use private settings. Private settings for them. Now, I think even overseas were the Campbell brothers, they must have had the king and queen and whoever else would be sitting with, with them as sure. honored guests. Mm -hmm. But that's, that's how they did it. Now, I didn't find too many instances where the bank sisters went overseas and I have an idea they got seasick oh because <laughs> they hate to go overseas that much right. and I don't blame them I get car sick right so I don't blame them for not going <laughs> so overseas thinking, that much I'd rather not be on the ship <laughs> oh I can't even watch TV with a ship going up and down I get oh wow real you're that woozy. sensitive to it so I think I'll get a little closer to the painting so that people can see that it is a little bit like a pastel in terms of how it looks, like if you look at her hair. And this was done by the Bang Sisters. And although the subject is unknown, her name, she's been nicknamed uh, Clara. And so you can see just kind of how that's done. It's different from a normal paint. It does have more of a pastel look. And in the amount of time that they would have, and if a canvas was being provided by a client, and there are ever and they like it's it is a curiosity thing, isn't it? How these would be would have been done because this looks so much like a pastel, especially right through the section here. Mm, yeah, you can really see. Now that's the oldest one that we have. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But most, most of the Bang sisters had a light and dark on one side mm -hmm. from the other. Sure. Same, as, same as Mr. Skidmore. I'm making them seasick with all the movement I'm doing. You can Sorry, look guys. in his eyes <laughs> and all the de fine detail in his face, and it's really... Yeah. You can see the eyes and all the detail of the, of the beard. 
And I, I should focus on a picture of the Campbell brothers, so I'm going to take you guys up on there. So that's a picture of Charles and Alan Campbell. So you have a sense of them. Now, with the precipitated art paintings, um, did when, when they would do these and then people would take them away, did they box them in a special way so that, that if anything was on top of them that they weren't, wouldn't come off? When they brought the, the canvases here, mm -hmm. they had them boxed up so the canvas wouldn't get mm -hmm. damaged in the train or whatever. Sure. And when they left, of course, they used the same box mm -hmm. so they wouldn't get damaged until they got home. And they would get them in a frame. Now, back in those days, they didn't frame them with a glass. Right. We use a glass today for a uh, I ask because my, my mother, as you know, is a spirit artist. And when she does, she does the big, huge, colorful acrylics, or she does the smaller charcoal. And she always makes sure she puts them into a plastic sleeve to protect them. And I can imagine that some of this could get really smudged otherwise. I know I read in one report of the Bang Sisters paintings that they used at one point two canvases. That was in the beginning. That's when, that's the only time I read where they used two canvases and it was in front of a window. Mm -hmm. Now, a real skeptic could figure that out that they just, if you blink or something, they could just real quick switch the canvases and come up with yeah. something that was finished. But there was mm -hmm. only one instance where I read that they done it in front of a window with two canvases. After that, it was just, one canvas that everybody could see they was perfected they, trusted, they had a they had a a series where it took them so long to get the system the way they wanted sure. it yeah. it was just like beginners the, these two here were beginners they're black and white mm -hmm. they look miserable <laughs> yes. they look sad <laughs> there's scribble marks on the one because there were so many here at one time that Kids were playing with them and scribbling on them. Sure. But that, I believe that was two of the original Bang Sisters. Mm -hmm. And then they progressed into the more beautiful works over uh, several years. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. In other words, they perfected their mediumship, the same as the slate writers or... Mm -hmm. Even a beginning medium is gets better over the years. Um, was it necessary for them to do it together, or could they do it separately? They always did it together. Okay. It was a joint mm -hmm. energy, right? One must have had positive, one negative energy, or, or whatever. The Campbell brothers didn't hold each side of the canvas. Alan was always mentioned as being by the canvas, but Charles was very close, mm -hmm. nearby. Mm -hmm. So it was, they were still joining there, but I think Charles was more shy about everything because he was always more or less in the banks, uh, in the background. The same as when uh, Lincoln was done, Lincoln's mm -hmm. canvas was placed flat on a round table, mm -hmm. and the people sat around that round table. Alan was around that table, mm -hmm. but Charles was back further. He wasn't a part of, he was only adding his energy. Do you think it's possible that one was serving more as a battery for the other to be more of the strong medium? Because back then when they would sit in circles, Many times it wasn't for all of the people in the circle to develop as mediums, but one would be the focused medium for the circle and the rest would sit as batteries to provide energy to amplify the, and magnify the efforts. Good. Do you think that's a possibility? I never put that in the book and I, I just thought about that. I never thought about that until you just mentioned that. Yeah, because usually, sometimes a mediumship can work that way. I've known even some mental mediums that as they get a little older, they have someone sit with them to learn, but also to be as a battery to help. 
and uh, you know, being in a group circumstance, it does magnify and amplify the energy of, of intention during that time. That's a good point. I'm just wondering, possibly. Yeah, that is a good <laughs> point, though. I mean, I like that. Yeah, yeah. Now, in terms of the, the spirit precipitation paintings, I know that they're, that you mentioned they're in the Maplewood. I would uh, encourage people to look back in the archive videos. I did do a tour of the Maplewood at one point with Ray Taft, and uh, we did focus a little bit on uh, the, the room that has the spirit pre precipitated paintings. And Ron has gotten re ready for you. This is a small version of the big painting um, of Azure. So let's tell them about Azure. We know the most about Azure because it was, it was done here in Louisville in 1898. And it was done in the house two blocks behind the museum in the Campbell Brothers' uh, more or less playhouse. It was a yard house where they kept their bird feeder, bird feeders, and all like that. Mm -hmm. They had their seances there. It was right near Forest Temple. There was no street that ran by the house. It just sat there, and it was peaceful. So they had a seance there. There were six people, six important people, well-respected people from the area. Mm -hmm. And they had a canvas on the back wall. Sandy, who usually works with me, lived in that house. And she said there was always this different feeling in that one back wall. But the canvas was on the wall, against the wall. There was a, a, a semi-cabinet on both sides, and like an L-shape, where Alan could sit on one side of the canvas, and one of the people in the audience would come up and sit on the other side. There was always somebody sitting on the other side. Mm -hmm. They would sit there for a while, and then somebody else would come up, and they would trade places, and they would sit there. Mm. That took an hour and a half. Same thing, it was, it was, the lights weren't on, but it was daytime, yeah, so they had the paints in the room, the people in the room, Alan in the room, they had Charles in the room, but it took an hour and a half to have this appear very, very slowly, a little bit at a time, until it finally appeared. And then when it finally appeared, the entity, that appeared, Azure the Helper, spoke through Alan Campbell, who was in trance, and said where he came from, his age, what his lineage was in his family. He was a biblical figure from the Middle East and different things like that. He talked through, through him there. All the, the, the six people that were witnesses all put their mark on the back of the canvas, which I've seen since they moved the, the painting from one wall to another at the Maplewood. They all put their mark on the back, not their written name, their mark, mm. like your initials and your circle it or something like Before that. Before you know? the painting was done. After the painting was or done. Or after the painting was done. After the painting okay. was done. They, 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 clarified that they were there and they put their mark on it. They also wrote and signed an affidavit of this is how this all happened. Mm -hmm. That's why we know what happened. Now, if you look at this very closely, it's, it's, it's life-size, like as if you were standing in a canvas. Yes. If you look there's a very light star behind the head. Can you guys see that? The middle hand is in the ohm sign over the middle chakra. Mm -hmm. now you can the see hand that point the in the air, I'm, I've been told, is a general blessing that a lot of the um, churches use with their, the way the priest or whatever holds their hand. Mm -hmm. There's a fingerprint on the finger that's in the air and it's facing out. It wasn't stuck on there, it's facing out. 
In the robe, there's all triangles and pyramids. And I tell everybody, do not sit there and stare in those eyes because those eyes will actually mesmerize you. It'll put you in to a goofy your, trance state. state. I've done it. That's why I'm telling you, don't. <laughs> don't do it because I'm From personal enough. experience. So yes, yeah, just in case you're just jumping on, it's a huge painting that is in the maple wood that is the size of a human man uh, standing there. And so it's, it's a really beautiful painting that's in the Maplewood Hotel. If you're here uh, next time in the summer season, you may want to take a look at it if you haven't already. But it's something that uh, you can see that was done on June 15th of 1898, which lasted for one hour and 30 minutes, as Ron said. And, you know, before uh, I got here today, Ron, I started thinking, you know, what about airbrushing? and airbrush equipment and things like that. And it would have been, um, I looked up when the first airbrush was made. It was 1876 by the man who invented the Stanley Steamer, if you know what that is. Mm. Yeah. And then in 1893, an atomizing airbrush was invented. But all of those would have been louder, louder. not mechanical, and people would have and said, I hear that. So I just thought it was kind of a curious thing to look up when that happened because it almost has an airbrush effect but it's so detailed they wouldn't have had such a good airbrush back then to even produce these kinds of details in the paintings. And someone asked, can these paintings not be re redone today? Is it possible and has it been tried? I don't understand the redone necessarily. If We've already uh, answered earlier in, um, in this episode that uh, it's really not done these days and uh, our theories as to why. But in terms of redone, I don't know if he means uh, maybe the ones that are, are scrawl scrawled on or whatever, if they could be fixed. But I kind of doubt it would be worth uh, doing that unless we had the money from someone who wanted to donate. I don't know that if he means redone as in restored or uh, redone in terms of other mediums doing this kind of work but i just thought i'd answer that question while i was here yeah well anything else you'd like to share with us about this ron because it is a fascinating curious thing and uh you know it's easy to be skeptical about these kind of paintings but it's also interesting to see the layers of of looking into it more and how you're finding um, verification as you go on through the years about these paintings. I found at least at least six more that people have brought to me. Like I found this this was on a wall in a restaurant in Ellicottville and this one here looks very looks like the mother of this one here. Oh. And that was only on a wall in Ellicottville. And mm -hmm. now those, I showed those people, they brought it here. I took it all apart mm -hmm. and we, I took some tests on it and we put it back together again. Now they have it in their house, not in the, hanging in the restaurant anymore. And there's another one. That's the one they brought up from from a library down oh, yes. around Linesville. That's the one you told the library, please hang on to yeah. it. Now, I had another uh, question in terms of all of this. Are the Bang Sisters and Campbell Brothers the only ones that became high profile in this kind of precipitation uh, spirit painting effort? Or were there others that you would know of? There were others that I know of. I looked into the Winan Brothers. The Winan Brothers their their technique was so ridiculously fraud uh, that I didn't even attempt to put it in the book because they said, "Well, bring us a canvas and a picture of your of your loved one, uh, and we're gonna fasten it together. And we're gonna put it in this closet and lock it and give you the only key. And when the spirits tell us it's done." Uh, We'll, we'll send you a message and you come and you 
can pick it up. Well, come on, cut me a break, you know. Yeah, yeah. So I left them out of the out of the book. Sure. There was there were some other ones, but their their, their techniques were pretty much the same. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. that one the one lady was doing it, and she also she got caught. This one little kid was a really great artist, and they caught him drawing and painting in some of these pictures that oh, this of the spirits that they wanted. Wow! So I left that one out. I mean. That, that's too much doubt. It's it's <laughs> it's just too blatant of fraud. No, I know that the Bang sisters and Campbell brothers did have to face uh, people being skeptical when they were alive and dealing with claims of of fraud themselves. And do uh, you have any stories about that? We have one precipitated painting in the Maplewood. We've nicknamed her Nora. Uh, the parents were skeptics. They loved their daughter. They didn't have a picture of her, so they came, and they, came, they had one of the few private sittings with the Campbell brothers, and it came through. The picture appeared on the canvas exactly the way that the young girl looked. She was probably an older teenager, and the parents were so scared and horrified. They left the painting here and they took off. Whether oh, they took off in So they their, asked for it, they got what they, they wanted. They, 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 they high-footed it out of here or they jumped on their horse and carriage and left or whatever, wow. but that's how we, we have that. We have that particular one. Yeah, that, that was documented, so. Fascinating things. So, I mean, they were skeptics, and then they were scared. Right. And I guess they weren't skeptics anymore, but they were scared people. Mm -hmm. I don't oh, think that's they so came, unfortunate. I don't think they came back. Oh. <laughs> you know, I think it, it's, uh, it's, it's good to remind people that back then, photographs were just starting to become a thing, and occasionally people would have a photograph in their pocket when they attended these seances for spirit precipitated paintings but they kept that to themselves they know that they didn't share that picture with anyone else prior to the session to the session and they would say things like oh i all of a sudden i see um something that's not in my picture that is something that my spirit person would have worn my loved one would have worn that's on their clothing now and you know so things like that that were not um things that could have been planted there they had to have x-ray vision <laughs> to look through the pocket because they weren't going to pull out the picture and say hey bang sisters there's what she looked like maybe we could just beam in on her and send her down here mm -hmm. and have her I, I can't figure out how or why. I mean, you know, I carry a picture in my pocket, but I'm not going to take it out and show it to somebody, especially if they're going to come through with a, a, a painting with or an index card with an image on it or whatever they do. I just can't. I, not, I didn't read it that many times. And just to reinforce it with people, this is not something that was done where they sat and were drawing themselves or painting themselves. This is something that they would set up. They would set the intention of prayer and uh, be in that mode of receptivity, and then spirit would do the work, ultimately. Right. Yes. So the name of Ron's book is Precipitated Spirit Paintings, and... Uh, you, you can find that on Ron's site, I believe. Yeah. And on Ron's website, which is stores. Ron Nagy. <laughs> so it's something. Anything else you'd like to add before we close our episode for today? We've covered a lot of ground. It's been great. Any questions anybody has, just send me uh, an email. And what's the email or, address? Or uh, a Facebook message. Okay, you can find, uh, if you look up Lilydale Museum, and I will, of course, link this when I get a chance on this post for later on, but uh, you can look up Lilydale Museum on the Facebook 
if you're on Facebook. <laughs> it's you also are on LilydaleAssembly.org, mm -hmm. and you can just go over and click on Museum, and oh, it'll beautiful. take you right there. Perfect, perfect. And that way you can connect with Ron. Ron uh, fields a lot of questions, just so everybody knows. Uh, you, you feel a, a lot of questions having to do with people who had relatives who lived here in Lilydale in the past, people who, are, who have purchased homes here in Lilydale and want to know more about their house. And uh, you're constantly receiving from people all over the country, it would seem, <laughs> uh, various artifacts, paintings, and things to do with Lilydale and spiritualist history. And to, for me to add, don't feel fronted if I just answer your question and don't say uh, your first name and sign up my name. I just answer your question like we're having a conversation and I just hit send and there you, you have your answer. It's, it's, it's not... It's just Ron's style. It's my style. <laughs> He's a, he likes to be efficient because Short he gets so many people asking him questions which we do appreciate the work that you're doing here in the Lilydale Museum. And we're so glad that you let us in today to uh, talk about spirit precipitated paintings. It's, it's such a, a fascinating, uh, curious phenomenon. And I hope everybody really enjoyed the show. Next week, I have as my special guest, Dot McCarthy. And I'll be back, so tune in on Wednesday morning at 10 a.m. for your next great show of Wednesdays with Willa. Thanks again, Ron. Take care, everyone. Bye-bye.